Migration occurs in many animals, including birds, fish, grazing animals, and even insects. Why do these creatures expend so much energy moving from place to place at certain times of the year? The main driving forces behind this are food and reproduction. However, reproductive migration itself can generally be broken down into two types of migration, those done for safety reasons and again those for food. Now, some migrations can be over a relatively short distance, like moving up and down a hillside or a mountain, whereas others can be journeys of thousands of miles. Now, as weather patterns change in a particular area of the seasons, so does the food that's available to eat. The most obvious example of this is in winter. In some areas, the ground is covered with snow and ice, plant growth slows down or stops, and herbivores find it difficult to locate grass, fruit, nuts, and other sources of food to eat. However, other seasonal conditions also exist, such as rainfall, where the amount of available food, especially grass, varies with the rainfall levels, and herbivores can travel substantial distances seeking fresh grazing. Migration for new food sources is one of a range of behaviours to changes in the local environment. An animal doesn't migrate when major food sources become scarce. It can hibernate and wait out for the change till better circumstances are returned, or tend to seek out new and different food sources. Whilst these may not provide as much energy and nutrients as the normal food, they may keep the animal going till those preferred sources are available once more. Finally, it may store food obtained during better weather, like squirrels storing nuts for the winter. Now, all of these strategies come with their own risks and problems, making the migration solution sometimes the most efficient solution. With these migration or survival strategies also come challenges for predators, who can choose to migrate following their prey, or tend to seek to hibernate or seek other sources of food. However, predator migration comes with extra issues, likely to come into territories of other predators who may attack them either to protect their own territory or directly for food as prey themselves. Now reproductive migration into an area rich in food has obvious examples when trying to feed growing infants. The reproductive cycle of many animals is directly linked to the peak in available food. However, some reproductive migrations to areas with little or no food because the infants are generally small, weak and vulnerable to predation and other environmental issues. The animals can raise their young in an environment with little or no predators, then the baby has a very chance of making it through to adolescence. Now, one prime example of this is the emperor penguins of the Antarctic, who migrate towards the South Pole and away from the coast in order to raise their young. But the extreme conditions of the Antarctic mean that no predators can survive where the penguins go. However, also means that the penguins also struggle to survive. This trade-off of risk and reward governs all migrations. Only when there's a substantial benefit to be gained will animals undergo the rigours of migration.